Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. We're back for some more standard. So after running some more games here on my tablet today, um, ended up running into a lot of Boros Convoke, a lot of Azorius Control, and while the uh, Mono White Humans deck has been doing really well, these are two matchups that it does kind of struggle a little bit with. Partially because you don't have any haste creatures for the Azorius Control matchup, which can get very long and grindy, and the <clears throat> Boros Convoke deck can just kind of go faster than you and go wider and go bigger. So with that said, I wanted to look back at Boros Convoke, see if I could build sort of a very consistent list that, um, you know, maybe is similar to what you're seeing in, in the meta right now, but maybe just um, hopefully a little bit more consistent. And at any rate, this is what I arrived at. So before we get into it, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate you. And if you do like my content, please consider subscribing. Please send it to a friend of yours who might also like it. Um, if you do have you know questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section. And I, I do read every one, so I really appreciate them. And give a thumbs up if you like the video. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. I really appreciate your support. It does mean the world to me. So let's get into the deck. Um, a lot of these cards are going to be just kind of um, pretty much staples of what you're seeing in this archetype right now. You know, the four copies of Voldar and Epicure, four copies of Novice Inspector, giving you the clue token or the blood token, which lets you kind of go off with your Lethal Demolition, um, as well as Warden Leader Sky to make use of all those tokens to help kind of get above your opponent. These, I think, are just going to be... Um, you know, just mainstays of the deck here. Four copies of Reinforcements to help really power out your Knight Urn of Eos, and then four Imidane's Recruiters to take advantage of all these tokens that you have. A lot of copies of the deck are running four copies of Case of the Gateway Express, and I think it's a great card. Um, I've been trying to look at how many copies of both Case of the Gateway Express and War Leader's Call I want to run, and I feel like, you know, I'm going to start with a full playset of each, um, they're just really powerful effects and just really capitalize on what this deck wants to do. I know there are certain copies of the deck that run um, Regal Bunnicorn, which is also really powerful in this deck. Some copies of it uh, run um, <clears throat> Lunark Veteran, which is another card which can really help in like the Mono Red matchup. But I really want to make sure that we're sort of well suited for the Azorius Control matchup. And that's kind of where World Leader's Call shines. And then Case of the Gateway Express helps against sort of opposing creature strategies while also giving us a nice buff. The last card here is Yoshin Frontliner. Some versions of the deck do run this card. Some versions try to sort of skimp and run without it or maybe, you know, run something else like Charming Scoundrel. I think that the Frontliner is great because it allows you to get two activations of, um, or you can cast Gleeful Demolition twice on this card. So, you know, you... Gleeful Demolition, then you bring it back with Unearth, and you do it again if you have two Gleeful Demolitions. So I think that's pretty great. <clears throat> also, the fact that it's colorless. You know, if you only have access to, um, you know, like a single red mana, for example, and you want to be able to kind of go off with like a turn two Night Air Navios, where you need to have like a white creature, um, this is a problem you can sometimes run into if you have like Voldar and Epicure and Gleeful Demolition, and you don't have like the right mana set up, but it's easier with like Novice Inspector and Yoshin Frontliner because they don't have that same color requirement. So I think having four copies is gonna be something that hopefully gives this deck a little bit more consistency. And even though it's not as powerful of a card by itself, I think it's good enough. And getting 12 different versions or ways to make an artifact here for demolition, I think is gonna be great. For the board, or excuse me, for the land, we have 20 lands, which I think is about the lowest that I want to go, because I do want to consistently be able to do like a turn three Imidanes or turn three War Leader's Call. So with the land, I'm trying to be as consistent as possible here as well. Two copies of Caverns of Souls. You can use this to either name Human or Vampire, and these are the only creature types here in the deck. So... You don't need the mana there for Frontliner, so it's just going to be Human or Vampire. Um, one other card just to br bring up here um, is 
the evangelist, the the three mana vampire that comes in with a bat token. Um, can't remember the full name of the card, but um, at, any, at any rate, that card is quite powerful as well. And so that's one that I was looking at. And I'm just trying to see if I want to have like a full playset of War Leaders calls or maybe shave a War Leaders call, bring in an evangelist. So I'm still kind of working that piece out. But we're going to start here. And then for the uh, the land, we have two Thran portals, four Battlefield Forage. So we have six Pain Lands. And then two Mirix here. And the reason I don't have more than two Mirix is because you can run into situations where you need to have like uh, either red or white mana or whatever it is, turn after turn. And so having a Mirix can be a real liability, especially because this deck doesn't usually get to use the making a token. That's kind of a sort of a side benefit, but it doesn't happen that often. So since you only have 20 land, I think just running two copies feels right. Uh, two copies of Sundown Pass as a nod to being able to have decent mana, but not having too many come into play tap lands. And then I did want to have two copies of Sokinzen, just because this effect is really what this deck is going for. Making tokens, they come in with haste, and they hopefully trigger your War Leader's Call if you've got that going. They can help you get to, like, Case of the Gateway Express with three attackers. So I think having two copies of Sokinzen feels pretty good here. If you do happen to draw both, you can always play, you know, have one in play, tap it for a mana, play the other one, replace it, and then you know, get the extra mana if you need to get up to three for a turn or something like that. But yeah, this way we have, I believe, um, 16 sources of both red and white mana to give us the best possible chance to be able to play all of our stuff. So all that said, let's go ahead and hop into some games. And I'm trying to get a little bit more time here to grind ladder a bit. I haven't been able to dedicate quite as much this month as I have last month. I've been pretty busy, but um, yeah, this is definitely, you know, one of the strongest decks out there right now, and sometimes it is just correct just to play the best deck available. Um, you know, even if you want to play something, you know, fun and spicy, I think this is actually a really fun deck if you're an aggro player, so yeah, this hand looks great. Okay, let's lead out here. Um, let's go with Epicure. Sometimes you have to like think about, you know, if you're gonna need like double white the next turn or double red. Um, actually, I guess maybe, maybe Inspector, because then we can use like red and white depending on what we draw. More likely that we're gonna draw more, more white cards. And since Inspector gives us the token, that's great also. All right, so now we'll just go into reinforcements on their end of turn. And then start setting up for case. So I think we just want to go case here. They don't really have almost any creatures in the blue-white control matchup. Some I've seen some copies starting to run like the 5-5 five five that has the, the two artifacts that you can sack for like lifelink or whatever, which is a pretty nasty addition to that deck. But we don't want to go with Recruiter just yet. So I think we'll just go case here. We can also do this after combat. Don't need to do it before. And then here, I do want to be a little careful because if they have temporary lockdown, they're going to get us for quite a bit. So I think I'm going to hold back just a little bit here. It's kind of, you know, like next turn we'll have four mana, so we could potentially go like, you know, one of these into Recruiter. So we will be pushing six, eight, 11, plus five, 16. So we will be pushing lethal if they don't do anything. Um, 
So I think it's maybe correct here to just hold a little bit. Yeah, and there's the lockdown, so I'm glad we waited. And I think we just want to go... Maybe just like Inspector Epicure plus Case here. Also draw a land here which wouldn't be the worst um, since case doesn't really do anything yet and this way if we draw up to five we could just try to go for like um, train troops as a possibility so that is another option I think maybe I will do that actually So we could try to go for the, the big push here this turn, but I think, you know, again, um, we're running into sort of problems on both sides. So if we go for trained troops, they could counter it with no more lies, but they can counter it anyway since we don't have an extra three mana. So I think maybe we just go for the trained troops play here and just, we could also push. And then if they decide to, you know, block with a restless anchorage, then we can know we'll, that we'll get the trained troops in. And I think that's worth doing to get some damage in. Yeah, they're not going to try to block here. So do they have the No More Lies? Okay, they've got Dissipate. Um, yeah, I guess we could just lead out here with, uh, we could just case right now and then get in for a little bit and then Epicure. Might also be better here to like wait and use Mirix token just so we don't use our whole hand. And then I think we just attack with a one inspector just so we can try to attack with three creatures next turn. And so the way they played this Jace makes me think that they're holding up another Dissipate here, since they could have played Jace for four but chose not to. Um, now this is also a place where we could use Yoshin Frontliner, especially if they have removal, because they could prevent us from getting the benefit of Case by using removal like when we go into combat here with one of our guys and delaying us a turn. So I think actually going for frontliner here feels okay. And this way we can also um, try to deal with their Jays. Their Jays doesn't really do much, but Having it off the board isn't the worst idea. Although maybe just going just kind of straight face here is probably better since if they minus three something, we don't really care. And 
I think we could Epicure here. Um, we can't do both reinforcements plus Mirix, but I am a little bit leery of another temporary lockdown. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we've got the Mirix plus the reinforcement, so I think it's okay to maybe push a little bit here. You could hold back the Epicure here, and I think it'd be fine. question is do we go for reinforcements or Murex? I think we want to try to let's see so we'll be pushing eight which is not lethal I think I'm going to hold the reinforcements and just try to go for the kind of additional as much kind of value as we can out of what we've got we could pitch the cavern of souls here it's not super important unless we think they've got like another dissipate um <laughs> And by doing that, we could potentially draw into like a recruiter. On the other hand, being able to have access to uncounterable rec recruiters is pretty great. So I can kind of see doing it either way. Yeah, I think it's worth maybe kind of going for, let's see, we've got six mana. So maybe Maybe let's just play it out here. That way we can ensure that the reinforcements stick. We'll still be able to Mirix at the end of the turn. We can uh, lose one here to the Anchorage and that's fine. Just kind of keep pushing. Okay, and that's fine. Yeah, so now I think we play out the Cavern of Souls and then use one of these map tokens. We can also, I guess, just use a map token first to see what we have on top of our deck and then still be able to reinforcements plus Mirix afterwards. Okay, and Warleader's Call is great. So happy to leave that on top. They are tapped out. We could just go for it right now, which I think is probably worth doing. So I guess let's go ahead and pitch Cavern of Souls. Get the Warleader's Call down. And now we can try to upgrade one of our other creatures here. We can improve upon your ideas. Let your blade do the talking. So they probably have Sunfall here, I'm guessing. If not, we're really happy. Uh, yeah, so let's just go ahead and push face, see what they do. Okay, now we can do reinforcements in response to get that damage in. Okay, 
and they've got to dissipate there. So let's try to buff up our team just a little bit. And I, we'll probably hold the cavern here to cycle with the blood token, so can do that next turn. Right now, let's just see if we can pump up a little bit more. Unfortunately, they've got the Field of Ruin to force a shuffle here. So much for that. Alright, so their plan is like double mending. Or just Jace. A weak minded will be educated in Phyrexia's ways. I know where to find all the answers. Okay, we can cycle our cavern. And that was a nice pickup. That was an even better pickup. So that should just be game, I think. Think. Let's see, because we've got, they'll block the three. They'll take three, five, so, yep, that's game. Unless they have an answer in hand. But I think it's worth going for. Yeah, that's going to do it. <clears throat> yeah, it feels really good to be able to just have, like, much more powerful tools against blue-white control. They're in so much of a more precarious position with all of the War Leader's calls and the Imidane's Recruiter, which basically demand them to have a clean board every single turn. And sometimes that's not even enough. All right, yeah, this opening hand looks great. Looks like we are up against the mirror. We'll lead out here with the inspector to be able to block their inspector. Then I guess we see if they've got the nuts. Pretty good series of uh, events right there for him, for sure. We definitely need some more action here. <clears throat> yeah, we've got kind of a weak play. Um, I guess we could just do a case to get rid of one of their 1-1s. One it's not great, but it... Kind of get something going. We could also sack our clue to draw another card. Hopefully drawing into something or just get our frontliner down. Problem is we want to be able to use case on that warden. And it's already a 3-4. Which is super problematic. So I think getting the case down isn't super useful. We already have the Yoshin. So I think maybe just drawing a, a card here might be correct. It's the most mana efficient. Thank you. 
And then I think we just hold here to be able to block these 1-1s. One so not a great turn there, unfortunately, but... Try to make the best of a bad situation. Okay, and they've got Knight also, so this could be a very short game. Into Imidane's. Yikes. Yeah, I think we're almost completely just dead here. Um, we can case for two. Guess we can get rid of an inspector, but that's just not that exciting. We can play recruiter, which will just just have to chump next turn. I think we're just dead. Let's see, we block their two big guys. We're taking two, four, six, eight, ten, thirteen, down to three. I don't think we can come back from that. Yeah, so part of this too is just trying to find out like what's the correct mix of like creatures to um, like Case of the Gateway Express and War Leader's Call. I think War Leader's Call is like so good that you almost have to run four of it. It just, oh my god, it's so powerful. Case is great too, but like there definitely are spots where Case does seem a little less powerful. And then also the land count. You know, is 20 lands enough to get going? Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, here's like another hand where we have like basically one or two creatures and then like some stuff, but maybe maybe we're running like a full play set is too much. So I think here we... Do we want to keep three land? I'm tempted to to keep three land here and throw back a frontliner, but that does make this a little bit less explosive. Still, being able to cast this on three feels pretty good, and there's no guarantee that we'll have that option otherwise. We could just throw back the case here. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe we throw the case back in this case. And I think in general we want a little bit more white than red, but because we've got Sundown Pass, I think I'm okay going red on this one. Let's try to uh, see if they're willing to counter the Frontliner. Okay, I guess not. And then I'll go for the Inspector. I guess the problem with going for Inspector here is if they've got Temporary Lockdown, it's super rough. I'd rather have an Inspector after Lockdown, so maybe I'll just go Frontliner here instead. Now... Yeah, it's, I'd rather have the War Leader's Call stick. Going Knight Errant is pretty great, but like having some creatures in hand is good. So maybe we just run out the War Leader's Call. They could certainly counter it here, but 
I think instead of trying to throw our full board, our full hand onto the board, Okay, do have the more no more lives. Like the nice thing about that is that we still get an attack in. That's part of the reason I wanted to go that direction. Here, I think we can maybe attack with two frontliners and then do like a two point knight errant. Could also go for like a three point, but it's just not quite as aggressive. Um, and then it also plays right into like if they have Sunfall on five. Hmm. We could also just kind of play a little bit um, softer here and just like attack with three of these and then do like Mirix end of turn. That might not be the worst actually. And then just sit and wait for Mirix. <clears throat> yeah, there's the lockdown, so I'm glad we didn't just completely go all the way. Although Night Air and Avios could have played around it, but we didn't know if they had temporary lockdown or sunfall there. And the auto tapper there is kind of annoying. It actually worked out in this case, but I would have left the sundown pass open, I think. Again, this is like a fairly minor thing to play this or keep it. Um, I think that it's it's probably fine putting it out there. Like I guess if they have the if they have the board wipe, it's annoying. Um, yeah. Maybe we hold it. Okay, so here I think we just push with Knight Errant, see what they do. Decent chance they found a board wipe here, so I think <clears throat> again we just hold the Voldarn Epic here and just wait for them to do whatever they're gonna do. They even pitched a lock down there, so it's pretty telling. We'll just keep making threats here. Yeah, so now they can activate only one of their anchorages. They could have an emperor here, so I think we should certainly expect that but i think again um just pushing with what we've got here trying to get some damage in 
and then just kind of holding and just forcing them to do something it's probably the way and we're okay sacrificing one of our tokens if they have nothing else We could Epicure here, we're, they're getting to the point where they're getting almost low enough. Um, but I think that, again, we're happy to just wait and see what they do. Yeah, they're gonna go searching. This is a really nice kind of like, sort of vice grip to put them in, just like force them to, to board wipe. And then just try to like, keep like a decently sized hand. Yeah, there's the Sunfall. So I think now let's maybe go for Reinforcements, just because it's a little bit more damage. We could just go for the Mirix token, but it feels a little bit soft. Uh, let's do the Reinforcements. This way we can play around No More Lies, and then also search with a token. Alright, so they can activate and block one. Um, I'm not sure that one damage is really going to be... I suppose it's 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 a decent... I mean, we're, we're sort of grinding him down. And it does get it does force him to activate this thing, so that if they do have like another board wipe... So I think for that reason alone, it's actually probably worth doing. Just incentivizing them to activate this 4-4. Okay, the fact that they're not willing to do it makes me think that they for, for sure have another board wipe. So with that, I think we just play one creature here and then set up for another Murex token. So I think I'm okay going with the Epicure since we have another artifact source and our Inspector. And we can also just make artifacts with Murex. Again, keeping kind of a full hand and forcing them to react. They could have another like a uh, clean um, sunfall here, but I think it's it's worth just you know getting a token out of it before they can get rid of our our land here. Okay, so they do have a lockdown. Do we want to try, try for a different card? You know, I don't really think so. I think that um, we like our hand, so I think we're okay with letting this go. They do lo lose their uh, incubator token, which is nice. So that's kind of a side benefit. Okay, we'll start off with Inspector. This way, if we can resolve one of our wardens, then we can immediately have priority to scry before they can respond with uh, interaction. Okay, I guess if they have two normal lives, that works. All right, we are gonna pay with the Thran portal here so we can cast another one if we need to.
and that's perfect on top. Especially seeing multiple counters down, now we feel a lot better about trying to do train troops if we want to go that direction. Now the nice thing about Demolition Field is that because it's not the uh, other type of uh, non-basic removal, we actually can just decline to search and this will stay on top. So that's super important. If it was Field of Ruin, we wouldn't have a choice and they would force a search. But with Demolition Field, we have a choice. <clears throat> okay, so now I think we just go Train Troops. Because if we go for just Recruiter... They can activate one if they have any removal. And like we assume they've got something. They don't just die. So if they've got the counter, this is kind of rough. But I think it's worth going for. And that's a nice uh, card to put on top. Um, let's see, they can't double activate, can they? No, not quite. So we are safe to get in with Warden. Unless they've got Wandering Emperor number two. Yeah, so they might want to throw this one under the bus and that's fine. And this is nice, because if they even do like a full board wipe this turn and don't have enough left up for um, like a blocker, we can just use like Warden on top plus Recruiter to get them for exact lethal. Okay, there's the lockdown. So unfortunately, because they had lockdown, they do have a blocker, which is super annoying. But I think it's still worth it, so... Yeah, this, it's kind of a pain. Um, that was like a perfect draw for them. And then I guess they just like block Warden. Um, yeah. We could also wait here to see if we can draw something else next turn and then just try to push for a little bit more. I guess this is good in a way because it gets rid of their anchorage, which is annoying. And they do have Wandering Emperor here. Okay, so back to the drawing board. So the fact that they sacked their Wandering Upper makes me think they've got a second one in hand, which is annoying. Um, let's go ahead and get the Scry in here, I think. Mirrix is nice because it gives us inevitability, but we kind of want to go a little bigger right now, I think. Hmm. See, they've burned through t three temporary lockdowns and a sunfall. You certainly could have more. I guess Mirrix is pretty good in that regard. They've got to have another, like, land removal for it. Yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I feel like we can do a little better. Might be famous last words, but I guess we'll see.
Okay, they've got another sunfall. <laughs> they didn't even attack. They just said, no more, no more nonsense. We're just going for it. Okay, so it would have been nice, I suppose, in the face of a sunfall, but... <sighs> we'll keep this in hand in case we want to, like... If we draw, like, an epic here, we need to pitch it or something like that. Five board wipes so far. <laughs> Okay, demolition, but no. So maybe we should have kept it in, 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 actually, due to the fact that we hadn't seen any demolitions yet, it probably would have been good to keep the Merricks, actually, now that I think about it. Way farther into our into their library than we are. Three fully executed memory deluges. <laughs> yeah, and these gleefuls on top are not feeling good. I think unfortunately that's going to do it. So we lost to the nemesis. So opening hand looks great. Um, let's lead out here with Sokinson, I guess. Okay, Frontliner plus Demolition feels pretty good. I think we want to go reinforcements epic here before we go into recruiter. Get a little bit bigger here. And I don't know that we want to send right now. Although I suppose if we eat recruiter, it's a pretty decent send. They can eat like one of our tokens safely. I think we want to, uh, yeah, let's build up a little bit more. Ideally, they go into, like, um, Knight Errant here. Yeah, this is a really good turn for us to go big. Okay, so if we push now, can they kill us on the backswing? So if they draw into Recruiter on their own turn and, um, let's see, we're pushing 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 20. 
they could safely block like the recruiter take 17 go to one if they play their own recruiter that's 3, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 19. They could have exact lethal. So it's still worth pushing here, but I think we send everything except for the recruiter. Because they could return swing for exact lethal if they have land plus recruiter in hand, or if they draw into the land and have a recruiter. Actually, I guess we could have swung with recruiter there instead of one of the tokens and then bump, buff the recruiter for a little bit more damage. That would have been better. Forgot about the frontliner, but even still, I think we want to leave one guy back just to make sure we don't die to the reverse swing. Okay, that was a nice draw. So if we push with everything here, they have seven blockers, we have eight attackers, pushing one damage functionally. I think we just, eh, I think we need to wait another turn. We can force down some of their blockers, but we do take some losses as well. Problem is they can start hitting us in the air with the stupid warden next turn. They can make two guys possibly on their next turn. I guess since we can bring the frontliner back. Uh, yeah, I think we still gotta wait, unfortunately. All right, so they can hit us for five in the air. But this is good because we should have enough to get through now because they'll only have seven blockers. Yeah, that should be game. For exact lethal. I guess, yeah, a little bit more. I will say that I like the War Leader's Calls a lot more than uh, Case of the Gateway Express, specifically against like blue-white control. Um, Case is still great against a lot of other decks, but it's one consideration for if I were to shave any of those, it would probably be Cases over War Leader's Calls, just because War Leader's Calls don't get removed with temporary lockdown. Now that is just one deck, but blue-white control is still a big deck in the format. 
All right, let's lead out with Inspector. Let's name Human. Okay, I wonder if this is the Anvil deck, either the Anvil or maybe like the Cell Sword Fling deck. And I guess it's worth noting, yeah, I suppose we could have gone like Epicure instead of Frontliner there and then used the Blood Token and saved our Clue Token. Actually, maybe that would have been a little bit better. But um, this is okay also. Okay, let's uh, get an Inspector and a Frontliner. Yeah, there's the anvil. Okay, so it is the sacrifice deck. Case is pretty fun. We need the right mana though for that to work. Now, if they have Path of Peril, that is one consideration, which they could have. I think I'm going to go Epicure plus Frontliner here. Do we want to hold back at all in case they've got it? I mean, because if we draw a land, we're definitely pushing for lethal. Yeah, they can. Yeah, I think let's just hold back a little bit here just in case they've got path. And then maybe let's a front liner here see if we can find some mana for case or something else okay not so lucky I guess we can try to filter again if we don't hit. Okay, there's the land. So if we push with Recruiter, they've got three blocks, possibly a piece of removal in hand. They could sack to go up to six. So they are taking four with Recruiter. I think maybe Case is fine here. We can go like Case plus 
uh, frontliner, and that feels pretty good. And then just set up for recruiter next turn. That should pretty much do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'd love to hear your comments, um, what you guys think, if you what you'd change. But so far, yeah, the deck is doing decently well. Uh, let's. In this particular one, went 60%, 3 and 2. Let's take a look at the stats. Yeah, and since I rebuilt the deck, I think it just um, it's just kind of showing just this these games so far here. But, uh, but yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think of the deck. And we will see you here in the next one. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much again for supporting the channel. And we'll see you tomorrow.